With data-driven dialogue, I think that we are able to look more one-on-one -on -one at the students. We can pull out individual students and know where they are. I don't know why you wouldn't use it because without it, you don't, we don't know where to go. Before I started using data, the kindergarten team would teach one unit and go straight to the next. Now we have proof of whether or not the children have mastered that skill or whether or not we need to reteach it. 11, so you drop the one, and what do you do with that other 10? We were able to look at our uh, math data as an entire grade level. It just gives me a lot of, a lot of teaching patience. So as you're looking at the data and you're pulling up the questions, you're pulling up the standards, um, you know, what is it that the data is telling you? What is it, what does the red mean? We hold dialogues mean? around data. So you might call them data-driven dialogues. So what we do is we invite the teams to um, come together with their data. We're not making guesses. We're, we're, the data tells us it's factual. You know, we can't make assumptions about students. It's in the data. And so as a first year teacher, it really shows me um, what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are. Um, it just gives me a lot of, a lot of teaching did implications. Did we teach them a variety of strategies? And did we get, did, I, I, I'm just curious if that's an opportunity for growth that maybe we need to bring over some of those strategies. And I'm going to pause you if you can't see the button. <laughs> 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 okay, it is an like... awesome on target question for the next phase. Okay, <laughs> okay. because it might lead to a because. And we're staying away from anything that has to do with because. There are three phases to walk through when looking at data. The first phase is the here's what. That's looking at the data. And really what we want teachers to do before they even do that is make a prediction. How well or how poorly do you think your students will have done on particular standards? And we make those predictions. Those predictions are so important because it helps anchor our thinking to the reality. What might have been our areas of strength? Knowing basic facts. I, I think the kids really have basic facts as far as addition and subtraction go. Um, multiplication, I think, through fives, um, they're pretty solid. I actually was going to say place value. And then we look at the data. We let the data speak for itself. Here's the data. So what are some statements we can make about the data? OK. Megan? Um, number 30, number 15, and number 23 all involved estimation and were below 70%. So what? So what does that mean? That number 26 was a level 3 application question that involved a graph? A chart. A chart that involved mm -hmm. a chart. And they had to completely fill it in. And they did well. Now what we want to do is um, have a conversation about trends, surprises, what patterns are we noticing from the data, what does that mean um, for our students, what does that mean for us as educators. And we have 43 cents. What can and what we really try to do with the data is focus on um, by name and by need. So we want to know which particular students still need to um, master this particular standard. And then after that, we go to now what? Now what are we going to do about this data and about our findings and about our conclusions? So now we're going to say, well, this was afforded more instructional time. or This was, um, we realized that in the standard it asks us to really describe, but only, we only focus on the identify part. So that gives us information as, as the um, teachers that we need to go back and attack it from a different point of view, from a different strategy. Pat on the back. Way to go, guys. All right, everybody got it right. After we've really analyzed all the data, it's now time for our action plans. So we take what we, um, what we, what the data showed us, and we say this is where we need to go from here. The first step to this problem is knowing how much you spent. Who can explain the second part of the problem? There's definitely different standards that need to be retaught, different strategies that need to be put in place, and by creating and implementing six-week action plans, um, we can really get our students where they need to be. Give me an elevator of where you are. Totally get it? Kind of in the middle? Or you're in the basement, you'll have a clue. It has impacted my teaching by really understanding what the kids need from me. Instead of having a whole group lesson and then just 
kind of watching them, I, I can really see through the data what they need. You're gonna be my first group tomorrow when I meet with you, okay? So that we can go over and out using that data to know where the kids, where they are and where their individual needs are, there's no way to know what you need to do next. The advice that I would give someone who is starting off to use data is to tr not get so overwhelmed at the beginning. You don't have to assess every standard. You can decide, start small, start with one subject, start with one quarter, and then work your way out. It does get tedious, but it gives us the proof that we need that, yes, our children are learning. Because if your overarching goal is to improve student achievement, is to reach every student, to close achievement gaps, then you're going to you need the data to help continue this journey. Thank you.